preach uh, in the last installment of this series as we're bridging into the next series, Redirected Gatherings. Redirected gatherings. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your grace and your mercy, for your anointing and your presence in this place. We have no idea where we would be without you. Woo. But we're so glad to know you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody in the house of God shouts. Amen and amen. Amen. So glad to have you with us this morning. So you've heard some adages, you've heard this before. If you've heard it before, just say amen. amen. Hurt people hurt people. Amen. You've heard that before? Amen. Saved people serve people. Amen. amen, amen. Maybe that's new for somebody in the house, but saved people serve people, right? Um, but there's one thing, I, 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 there's one I want to offer today, and I wonder if you would repeat it after me. Growing people grow people. I need you to say that. Growing people grow people. Yeah, when, 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 I'm, when I am developing and, and maturing and, 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 and rising in my relationship with God, I'm a growing individual, then, then if I'm truly growing, part of the evidence of my growth is that I'm helping somebody else along the way. Amen? And so say this declaration with me. If I'm going to grow... I must grow other people. If I'm going to grow, I must grow other people. And you know what's at the heart of this, Elder Howard? At the heart of this is understanding that I've actually got something to give. Mm, come here, come here. I've actually got something to give. I've got, I've got something, uh, to, some value to add to the equation of somebody else's life. I actually have something that is useful in my heart and in my spirit that would be a blessing to somebody else. If I'm going to grow myself and then help others to grow, part of the foundation of that is I must understand that I've actually got something to give. Say, I got something to give. Everybody has something to contribute uh, in this life. Everybody has something to offer. Um, and you may just be starting out in your spiritual journey, or you may consider yourself a spiritual, spiritually elite person. Amen. You may, you may be young in your journey, or you may feel like you're, you're old and you've, you've done, done all of that you can to grow in God. But no matter where you are in your journey, this may be your first day here. It may be your 15th year here. No matter where you are in your journey, we all have something to give. And, and I want to put this in context to what I believe God is calling us to do in this new season and the reason why we're actually relaunching. We have served the city exceeding 100,000 touches in uh, four months early. Amen. Come on. Amen. You can give God praise for that. We said we were going to do it in 365 days. God said, that's cute. I'm going to do it in eight months. Amen. That's real nice, but I'm going to do it eight months. And what I want you to understand is that in this new season, what we're, what we're really pushing towards is to understand that we're not going to stop serving. We're going to expand the way that we serve. Amen. Because we went out to individuals and said, God loves you and God, God, God bless you. And, and here's the here's how we're making the gospel practical to you. Somebody showed up at a bus stop and they got a blessing. Amen. Somebody showed up at, at a laundromat and they got a free load of laundry. Amen. Somebody showed up at a grocery store and they got a free bag of groceries. Amen. Somebody decided they were going to uh, go to school, not realizing that we had adopted that school for our after school program. Amen. And so we have been out in the community serving, but you know what? That's a beautiful thing, but you know, there is this journey that, that Christ takes us on, and, and, and he has that first encounter with us, but that first encounter isn't all he wants. Can somebody say amen to that? That first encounter is just the beginning of the journey that he's trying to take us on because God has so much more. You know, uh, 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 Vladimir, I'm so glad that I serve a God that always exceeds my expectations. Do I have any other, anybody else in the house of God today? It's like you think he's going to do one thing, but then he always surpasses what you could conceive possible. He always pushes beyond what you thought were the limits of your ability to take you to the place that he has already destined you. God, the, the God that I serve, is, does always th he does things bigger than what I expect him to do. 
And I'm so glad I serve that kind of God. And that's the same, that is the same mindset that he's working with, in, in, with, with us in this, in this season. He doesn't simply want us to just go out and serve, which is great. He wants us to move out. He wants us to make the gospel practical. But there will be individuals who come through these doors that are saying, I got the fact that Jesus is real. Now I want to grow in him. Amen. And so what we want to do is we want to provide the way to do that because we've always talked about serving broadly and then making deep impact. That was always our vision that we would move out throughout all the city and then we would come in, in, in as a follow up so that we could actually go deep. Because you know what? Here's the thing. It's nice to do a lot all over the city. But how many of you know if real change is going to happen, you have to kind of get under the surface. Amen. You got to kind of you got to kind of enmesh yourself in the lives of others. You, you got to be willing to get messy. I mean, think about the Jesus that we serve. The God that we serve came down from heaven and actually took on the form of a human. And my wife is pregnant right now, so I'm beginning to understand how difficult that must have been that the the, the that the God of humanity actually lived inside its creation. I mean, talk about messiness. Uh, he, 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 he actually chose to take residence inside the thing that he created so that he could be in, 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 in engaged in our lives and actually allow that engagement to be transformative. And I believe that is the thing that he has extended to his children. He's saying, look, y'all, I want you to do the same thing I did. And it's going to be messy. It's going to get ugly. It's not always going to look perfect, n perfect, nice, and neat. There's going to be times that it's going to be challenging to you. But what I need you to understand is if you're actually going to translate my love to the world, you got to get you got to be willing to get a little messy. Say, I'll get messy for Jesus. I'll get messy. I got to get a little messy. I got to be willing to rub up against some people who don't have the same ideas that I do. Oh, I, 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 I just want to push on this a little bit. I'm going to move back to my, my prepared notes. But can I push on this just a little bit? We live in a society right now where it is more comfortable and it is encouraged to actually only listen to those and hang out with those that think the way that you do. And, and not only that, but somebody who doesn't think the way that you do, you demonize them, right? Now, I'm going to talk about in a, in a second why it's important to have people who you are in agreement with, but understand every relationship that you have cannot just be with people who think like you think, look like you look, go to the school that you go to, grew up in the neighborhood that you grew up in, and think the, and, and, and behave the way that you behave. you got to be willing to expand that circle, and what that means is it's going to be messy sometimes. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's, it's going, to be, it's going to be difficult, but that is the calling of true Christian because Christianity was never meant for comfort, amen? It was meant for transformation. It was, it was meant for character development. It was meant for righteousness. It wasn't meant so that you could just feel good about yourself. It was actually meant to push you and stretch you and challenge you and, and break you, hallelujah, so that you could be rebuilt again, amen? you got to be willing to go through something if you're going to allow God to really use you, say, use me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so we're pushing, we're pushing this, this, in this new season, God has given us a vision, Donnell, that we're going to actually reach 2000 and not reach them, but there will be 2000 worshiping here by Easter 2017. Amen. That's what I say. Amen. I got a hand clap in the house. Amen. 2000 that'll be worth that's our vision Easter 2017 we didn't just pull it out of the sky that was what the Lord spoke on this house and you know the Bible says that that it shall be confirmed in the presence of two or three witnesses man we got that confirmation and so as a church we're saying hey we're moving and rallying around that because here's the thing and we're going to show it to you in just a second here's the thing I don't think that there is any lack on God's part Jessica, there's no limit to his power. Amen. The only limitation is our ability and our willingness to be used by his power and to access.
possess that power. God has no deficiency. God has no lack. God has no, no weakness. In him is fullness of joy. In him is all strength. In him is all ability. My responsibility is to connect to the source that has it all in his hand. That's my responsibility. And if I connect to the source, then the difficulty of life becomes equalized. Not that it becomes easy, but it becomes equalized. In other words, it will not so outweigh what I, what I am able to manage. Let me clarify that. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, I will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear. But, but I need you to hear the text. And it's pro you said the Lord, we say that the Lord will never put more on you than you can bear. But that's not actually what the scripture says. The scripture says he'll never allow you to be tempted beyond what you can bear, which means that which means that there will be no temptation that arises in your life. That means that she won't walk in the door at the uh, at the appropriate time when you're feeling your weakness and you know you're going to give in and he will not provide you a way of escape. You didn't catch it. But life, in life, you will end up experiencing things you cannot bear. That's the point. You don't have the power to hold it. You're supposed to depend on the one who has already determined that he holds the world in his hand. So the temptation won't show up, but some burdens might, some issues might, some financial difficulties might. Your friends might turn their back on you. But what you can be sure of this is that when you're going through something that feels too heavy for you to carry, there is one who has determined that he will already carry it for you. And so, and so what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we served out in the community, but we want to give people who desire, those who desire, a pathway to go deeper with God. Say amen. 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 And, 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 and when I look at this, Claudia, I, I see that this is the intention of, of Christ from the very beginning. From the very beginning. Uh, when you look at Genesis chapter 2, when you look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, it says, it says, it is not good for man to do what? Be alone right there in the garden God is surveying the creation that he made and he's like wait a second y'all it's not good for him to to be alone uh, uh, this is before the fall this is before corruption this is before the destruction and death God is saying that it is important to be in community you were never meant I need somebody to hear me this today and maybe you won't hear anything else but you were never meant to live this life in isolation I need you to hear the pastor this morning you were never meant to experience this journey alone you were never meant to have to deal with what you might be dealing with all by your lonesome God has called us into community because he looked at Adam and he said uh, it is not good for man to be alone let me find him or make him a suitable helper now, 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 uh, Professor Beatty, I was, I was a little confused with this because uh, when, I, when I look at this, there were, there, were, there were all kinds of people around him, or all, it's not people, there were all kinds of life around him. There were elephants and, and giraffes and lions and, and tigers uh, all around him. There were, there were eagles and sparrows and hawks and blue jays and, and robins all around him. There were deer and sheep and goats and cows and maybe even some pigs, maybe way back then, donkeys and chicken. They were all around him, right? But yet he says it's not good for him to be alone and what he was saying is, is that I need to make him a suitable helper, meaning that I need to make him something that is of the same substance. That's a word and you didn't get it yet and you're going to catch up in just a second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Suitable meaning of the same substance. I, I need to make him something that, that breathes like he believe, breathes. I need to make him something that thinks like he thinks. I need to make him something that, 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 that can be a burden bearer with him. Amen. See, the problem with some of our relationships is that we are connected to people that are of a different substance. Preach, pastor, preach. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. We're connected. 
to uh, people of, of, of a different substance. You can't be in a healthy relationship who, with someone you can't even trust. You can't be in a healthy relationship with someone who is constantly criticizing you and never affirming you. You can't be in a healthy relationship with someone who you don't feel safe with. You can't be in a healthy relationship with someone you are constantly fearful of. You can't be in a healthy relationship only uh, with, with someone who, who only makes demands on you and never actually supplies for your needs. I wish I had a witness in the house of God today. You can't be in a healthy relationship with someone who is constantly dismissive of your suggestions and, 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 and your input. You cannot be in a healthy relationship with someone who is of a different substance. Uh-huh. Doesn't have the capacity for a healthy relationship. They don't, they don't even have the ability to have a healthy relationship. Somebody can't say amen, but you can say ouch. The animals did not have the capacity to have a real, authentic relationship. They could not be in real, authentic community with Adam because they were of a different substance. So God put Adam to sleep pulled a rib out of him and created a, a companion of the same substance so that they could be in community. See, the best relationships, hear me, are built when two are walking together in the same direction. Now, be clear, be clear. I, I, I did not say the only relationships. Amen. There's no contradiction to what I said previously. The best relationships are built with people who are walking in the same direction together, but they're not the only relationships we ought to have. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. But even when you're moving in the same direction, it does not mean that you will always agree. I need a, I need some amens on that. Unity is not uniformity. However, what it does mean is that we can grow together. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's, here's a, I, I, want, I want to just hit on this real quick. Here's my problem with the concepts of being traditionally Christian and liberally Christian. Yeah, I got to talk about it for just a quick, quick second. What it presupposes is that I, I, whatever, whatever camp I stand in is the right camp. It presupposes that if I hold on to all the traditions of the church, then I got it all right. Or if I'm on the liberal side, it presupposes that all the traditions of the church are wrong and we got to change everything and do something new. Right? The problem that I have with that is that the arrogance that it brings with it does not allow for real Christian community. Yeah, 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 you can't, you cannot, you cannot, ex, you cannot think that you have it all right and still live in community and accept somebody, somebody else's idea. You got to be willing to say, look, I am, I am flawed, I'm imperfect, and I have my opinion or my preference, but my opinion or preference does not trump the word of God. I wish I had somebody in the house of God. My opinion or preference does not trump what I feel the spirit leading us to do. I, my, my, my opinion or preference does not uh, supersede what I sense God's calling is and God's mandate is on this church and on, and on this city. I got to move forward even though sometimes it makes me uncomfortable. And here's the thing. The way I move forward is understanding that we are all trying to get to the same destination. Yeah, you know, I learned this from marriage. Amen. Amen. Can I, can I just teach real quick? Amen. I love my wife. Somebody say amen. amen. I love my wife. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't hear you loud enough. I said I love my wife. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So so, so, so what I learned from our, from our marriage is, what I learned from our marriage is, is that it is important, it's important for me to have a listening spirit so that I can determine intent over, over articulation.
Because the truth is, the truth is, I don't always have the words to articulate my intent. Preach, pastor. I, I, I don't always have, I don't always have the words to, to articulate my intent. But if, but, 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 but because, watch this, because I know that we are in a loving relationship, I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt that her intent is pure. So even when I don't understand her articulation, I'm going to stay in relationship so that I can get to the bottom of her intent. Yo, 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 uh, I, I need you to get this. I need you to get this because, because if we only pay attention to what comes out of somebody's mouth and then we demonize them, right, before we have the opportunity to ask questions to gain full understanding, then we may miss an opportunity to grow. See, because the point of, the, get this, the point of discipleship, the point of community, the point of getting engaged in a small group fellowship is so that I can grow because there are some things you can't learn in a large group. You got to boil it down to some intimate relationships. And I just, I just feel like not only in the church, but, 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 but in in our country right now, it's like there is no benefit of the doubt. There is only a, a listening to the articulation and not the intent. And then, and then here's the thing, here's the thing. What happens is, what happens is, is that when I, when I feel like I'm attacked, then I get defensive. Come on, come on. Can I just give you a little bit of stuff I've learned in my journey, just a little bit? So when I feel attacked, then I start to get in a defensive mode that further does not allow me to actually hear what you're trying to communicate. But real, authentic Christian community is intended to overcome that. See, see, see the thing is, we're all craving for it. We're all craving for a place where we can be vulnerable. We're all craving for a place where we can be transparent. We're all craving for a place where we can be our authentic self, where we don't have to put up a facade. We're all craving for that, right? And yet we have, even though we're craving for it, we have, we have, be, we have allowed ourselves to be comfortable with the alternative. Everybody's talking about alternative facts right now. And we've told, we, we shouldn't be surprised, so, so surprised about that because we've told ourselves a lot of alternative facts. <laughs> Pastor is preaching today. <laughs> hey, we've told ourselves a lot of alternative facts. And, the, and, 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 the, and, and one of the greatest alternative facts I believe we have communicated to ourselves is this, that I can do it by myself. You weren't meant to live in isolation. God has always called his people to community. And community is messy. So what? If we are trying to go in the same direction, if we're trying, then I got to say, look, you know what? It may not always be comfortable, but I'm committing myself to it. Say, I'll commit to it. I'll commit to it. I'll commit to it. I want to move on here. I want you to understand that, 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 that God understood our need for community. He understood our need for deep fellowship. He understood our need for, for real relationship and authenticity. So he called us into community. And there's three quick things I want you to understand about the community that he's called us to that will help us as we try to enter into this community. Because I, I, I've learned uh, since having my son that, 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 that I just can't accept expect him to do what's in my mind I've actually got to teach him amen I got to actually teach him and so I want to just teach you just here for just a few minutes uh, 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 what 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 the benefits are of entering into true community the community that God has called us to can I do it say yes pastor amen I'm glad you allowed me to amen 
He's called us into community. And the first reason why he's called us into community is so that we can experience a one another reality. Amen. Write it down. A one another reality. There are over 50 times in the Bible, over 50 times in the New Testament, where, 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 where the Bible writers say, you ought to do this for one another. You ought to forgive one another. You ought to serve one another. Encourage one another. Bear one another's burdens. Exhort one another. Pray for one another. Equip one another. Sp speak, in, speak truth in love to one another. Can I say that one again? Speak truth in love. Speak truth in love. Speak truth in love to one another. Uh, you ought to confess your sins to one another. Somebody say, I don't want to do that. Treat each other with dignity, dig, dig, dignity and, and, and respect. And community, in particular, small groups of community. Uh, uh, it, that is where these things are most likely to happen. I can't forgive you. I can't, I can't, I can't actually be in re real relationship with you if all I do is connect with you in a large group. We've got to actually have a, a, an experience outside of this. Can I use another dating analogy? Somebody said, no, amen. You need this in your life. <laughs> amen. This is just for you. Amen. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, uh. When you are when you are when you are dating, you know, there's like some books that came out some while, a while ago that were like really strict on the way that you should date. Um, and one of the, the, the things that they espouse is that you ought to date in groups. Y'all heard that before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't go out on singular one-on-one -on -one dates, right? But just date in groups, right? But I want to ask you a question. Even if you subscribe to that thinking, right? I want to ask a question. Who in here would be comfortable being married and only going out on dates in a group? No, that, that ain't going to work. That, <laughs> Henry said, well, no, no, that ain't going. No, no expression, just no, no, that ain't going. It ain't going to happen. I ain't going to do that. Right? Nobody would be comfortable with that, right? Because there is an expectation that while the, the big group is nice and fun, if I want true intimacy, amen, amen, then I must, I must actually separate from the group and spend time with one another, right? I got to get connected and I got to be in close proximity so that we can actually, uh, 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 and this is one of the other things that I've learned. I've learned that my wife refines me, amen? She helps me out. Hey, Trina, you can say amen. You don't, he, he ain't there. He ain't there. Just say amen. Amen. He refines me, right? He, he, I mean, she refines me. The, 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 it's in that close proximity that I actually learned some things that I didn't know before. And that's the second thing because I'm running out of time. The other thing that's beautiful about real Christian community, small group community, is that you experience some personal discovery. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, it's not only that you may be, be a blessing to someone else, but by being in community, you're actually able to discover some things about yourself that you did not know before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I've got so many notes here. I just want to, I want to hinge on this one point right here. Um, vulnerable relationships lead to personal discovery and re revelation. And watch this. We need each other's help to know the truth about who we are, who God is, and how we can live our lives in the light of the truth of God's word. We need somebody else to be a reflection to us if we're ever actually going to be able to understand who we really are. Community is not just about for, for, fulfilling uh, or adding value to someone else. It is in part, in, in partly, it is partly that, but it is also about understanding who you've really been created to be. Until you're actually in community with somebody, you don't realize that there's some stuff in you that needs to be delivered. Amen, because in real community, what's going to happen is this. Is they're going to be like, man, you were kind of ugly today. That attitude, what's up with that? Why you, why you, why you, why you acting like that? You know, when you really know somebody, they can walk in a room and you can sense that something's wrong. 
Come on, somebody. Right, right, right. You, you know that, they're, 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 their equilibrium is a little bit off. You know that something ain't totally right. You know that maybe somebody talked out, out, out of the side of their neck to them at work. You know if you really know somebody, you can, you can sense when they walk into the room, something's not right, right? Amen. Right. And so, and so if there's nobody there to check you on that, then you think it's acceptable for you to respond from a place of anger and frustration. But when you got somebody who you're in close community with and you come off all flippant because you dealt with some stuff, they, 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 can, they can absorb it, but then they're going to come back to you and be like, now listen, I love you and all, but I need you to know something. Don't you be coming up in here talking to me like that. Don't get it twisted. I wasn't always a Christian, and even though I love you, <laughs> there's still a part of me that ain't delivered. And if you're not careful, that part may come out. So next time you have a problem, amen, I'll give you some space. You can go and get a resolve, and then we can come back into community. Amen? All right. Because the, listen, y'all, come on. Come on, be honest with me, right? Because the truth is, the truth is, the truth is, we are all sideways sometimes, right? We all kind of lose it sometimes when ain't nobody perfect all the time, amen? Tap your neighbor and say, you ain't perfect, baby. You ain't perfect, amen? And ain't nobody perfect all the time. However, 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 we are not able to refine those imperfections if we are only living in isolation. Isolation. We got to actually be close to somebody and let them rub us the wrong way and then in Christian love speak truth and then enter back into community. The problem is, watch this, I've learned, I've learned that people you really care about, you will confront. Oh, I got to go. I got to go to my seat. I, I, I'm running out of time, but I need you to get that. People you really love, you will confront. If you don't care nothing about them, you let them act all sideways and then you go talk about them behind their back. I wish I had somebody in the house. Huh? Huh? You, you go talk, he, man, she just always got an attitude. She, he just always coming in with, with the chip on his shoulder like he got to prove himself all the time. But, but when you really love somebody, you're not, talking to, you're not talking about them. You're going to talk to them so that they can grow because the whole point of a growing person is that a growing person grows people. Hey man, I got I got I got to move on. I got to move on. The third thing that that real community does for us is it not only allows us to live or experience a one another reality. Not only does it allow us to have an experience of of going through personal discovery, but it also hallelujah. Watch this. It also produces voluntary accountability. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Somebody's like, I don't get it, Pastor. Can we go back to my text that I started in? Amen. Let's just go back to that text. Uh, when you look at when you look at verses nineteen, uh, excuse me, yeah, verse. I'm just gonna jump down verses eighteen and nineteen. You will see that after Paul preached the word of God and he was in the community, then the, the then the sons of Sceva. Y'all know about that story, right? The sons of Sceva, they showed up and they were trying to act like Paul was acting and trying to deliver folks. And, 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 and then one of them uh, uh, tried to deliver, excuse me, all of them tried to deliver this one man. And then the evil spirit rose up in that man and they were like, no, 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 bro. I know Paul. And I know Jesus. But who is you? And then the spirit that was in the man beat them up, sent them out naked. Now we know that part of the story, right? But the part of the story that we don't know is that after the, 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 the sons of Sceva were beat up, 
all the other folks who are practicing witchcraft and, uh, and, and were participating in magic, the Bible says, the Bible says, uh, when, this be, when this became known to the Jews and the Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Verse, verse 18, many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. Watch this, verse 19, a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly when they calculated the value of the scrolls the total came to 50,000 drachmas which is a drachma is a silver coin the silver coin that they were speaking of in that time was worth a day a day's wages so in other words what the text is saying is that 137 years of wages was laid down on the ground when they be, when they came in count, in, into contact with the power now I need you to jump to verse 11 and then I got to go. I got to go to my seat. Jump to verse 11. Jump to verse 11. God did extraordinary things through Paul. I'm making the connection. Watch this. So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. I want you to understand something. I want you to understand something. When the power of community is at work, watch this, the demons start policing the people. Y'all didn't get it. 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 I got to talk to the folks back here. Y'all didn't get it. When, 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 when the power of community starts to spread, remember the text that I read, excuse me, remember the text that I read, it said that as they met together, everybody who was Jew or Greek, everybody in Asia heard the word of the Lord, right? And so they heard the word of the Lord. Paul starts performing miracles within community, right? And then, and then like the, the, the demon's like, oh, these people are serious. So they're like, when they see a, a, an inauthentic or an illegitimate person, right? Then they're like, no, no, you ain't the real article because now the demons know what the real article is. So, 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 so it was the power of community that produced a vulnerable or voluntary accountability. Because now that they see this power moving throughout the city, now the rest of the magici uh, ma ma magicians and the rest of the, uh, of the witchcraft folks and the sorcerers, they were like, look, we don't need to get checked like the sons of Sceva. We're going to voluntarily let you know what's going on in our lives and be like, save me because I don't want to go through that thing. And what I'm saying to you is, is that when you're in real community, you nobody will have to ask you if you've been locked in sin. Nobody will have to ask you if you're tied up in some bondage. Nobody will have to ask you if you're going through a struggle. You'll say, please pray for me because I'm going through and I can't make it by myself. So help me get out of what I'm stuck in. And in real community, you won't get judged. You won't get condemned. You won't be persecuted. They'll say, okay, come on, baby. Let's go to the altar. Let's lay down before the Lord. Let's make our positions known. Let's make our requests known. Let's talk to God and let him work it out. I wish I had some folks in that building that will say, God, I'm ready for community. I'm ready to be vulnerably accountable. I'm ready to step into this thing because I'm tired of living this fake life. I'm tired of living this empty life. I'm tired of living this frustrating life. I want to be connected to a people. Watch this. I want to be connected to a people who I can be real with, who I can be authentic with, who I can be transparent with, who will not condone my behavior, but they also won't condemn my behavior. Come on, somebody in the house of God. That's what real community is about. It's not about excusing sin, but it's, how, it's, it's about helping you to grow out of sin. See, we think that everybody got to be fixed up before they come into the house of the Lord. I'm just trying to figure out what text in the Bible says that. Every text that I read shows that there were messed up people who were doing extraordinary things. I mean, can we look at the disciples for a second? Those were some messed up brothers. 
But Jesus loved them in spite of themselves and said, I'm going to enter into community with you and I'm going to help you grow. And I just wish we had some church folks who would say, hey, listen, I'm going to be like Jesus. And even though I ain't perfect like him, I'm going to try to help you grow. You Listen, we're going to go through this thing together, baby. And I ain't going to talk about you behind your back. I ain't going to tell nobody about your business. When you can be a secret, your secret is safe with me. I told Wednesday night, uh, uh, Minister Harris said, I told uh, uh, them on Wednesday night at Recharge, I told them, I said, my great grandmother told my grandmother that every best friend has a best friend. Yeah. Come on, so, come on, Denise. Huh? Every friend has a best friend. So you can't keep, you can't expect that when you tell somebody something, that it's really safe with them. Right? Because that friend has a best friend, and that best friend has another best friend, and then that best friend's best friend has a best friend. Huh? So you really can't, you really can't count on anybody to hold it. But man, wouldn't it be a beautiful thing that amongst the people of God, there was a, there was a culture, a culture of trust. Yeah, a culture of if you tell me something, it stays with me. If you, if you confide in me, I'm going to hold on to that thing. I'm gonna, I'm a, and not only am I going to hold on to it, I'm not just going to hold it in my spirit, but I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to go to the throne room for you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to intercede for you. I'm going to believe God for your victory and for your miracle and for your deliverance and for, 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 for you being, being snatched out of the hands and say, I am going to walk with you in this thing. Wouldn't that be a beautiful thing if that was the culture? And that's the, that's the culture by God's grace we are going to build right here at Miracle City. We're going to build it. That's the season that God is calling us to. He's calling us to authentic community. He's calling us to, to get connected in these, these groups that allow us to not only just show up on Sabbath, but be connected throughout the week. And, and, and I know for a fact, I know for a fact that, that God has not just called us. To, to have 2,000 in attendance on Easter of this year. He hasn't just called us to have it. We will have the 2,000 in attendance. Okay? Amen. 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 Y'all didn't say amen. amen. We will have the 2,000 in attendance. But even more than that, I need you to hear me. Even more than that, God is calling us to, to, to provide space and an environment where real community and discipleship can happen. And that's why you see all of these signs up around the, 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 the building today because today we're launching our community groups and we're saying we're going to give you an opportunity today to say, I want to get connected. I want to, to experience that one another reality where people are, pr are praying for me and I'm praying for people. I want to experience that personal discovery where, where it only happens when I'm in community with someone. I want to experience that voluntary uh, accountability where nobody's having to check me I'm checking myself and I feel comfortable checking myself because I know that when I share what's going on in my life I'm not gonna get the side eye I'm not gonna get I'm not gonna get the 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 conversations that go on behind my back no I'm going to get an opportunity to actually share my heart and then be held accountable to what I desire. Here's the thing. I need to get this out. I, I got to go. I got to go. But here's the thing. Here's the thing that I, that I love is that when you're growing in Christ, here's the thing. Nobody actually has to tell you you're wrong. <laughs> Nobody has to tell you what your real heart's desire is and where you want to go. You already know. You're just looking for somebody to encourage you in that journey. You see, when you're growing in Christ, it's like, it's like, man, I want to get better. I want to be, to be all that God has called me to be. I want to live in my destiny. But I'm just saying to you, it doesn't happen outside of community. And the reason why it doesn't happen is because that's the way that God has made it. Amen? Amen. And so today we're giving you that opportunity in a few seconds. I'm going to pray and then we're going to actually the, the, the worship team can go on and get in, 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 in their positions. I'm going to pray. And we're going to invite you to connect 
and sign up for a group today. Today. Because I don't want you to leave here without a viable way to enter into what God has already called you to. The destiny and the plan that he has for your life cannot be fully achieved outside of the path that he has set up. And so we're giving you that opportunity today. There's no pressure. It's your choice what you want to do. It's your choice how you want to engage. It's your choice. But I want to encourage you to make the step today to enter into real, authentic community. And here's the thing I learned. Can I give you a quick story? Quick story, last story. Amen. Can I just testify? So, when I was in high school, I was a little arrogant, a little bit. A little bit. Y'all don't believe that. Don't, don't, don't shake your head yes. Like, oh, we can see that. Hey, listen, God needs big egos sometimes. Amen. Amen. But he was humbling me. So I was, I was thinking that I had all that. And I was all that. But God kept humbling me. And my humbling led me all the way to the bush of Zambia, Africa. Out in the middle of nowhere. Wasn't no running water. Y'all ain't hearing me in here. I grew up in California in the city. I was out in the middle of nowhere with no running water sleeping in a tent because God had done something with my heart that I began to desire to see his people transformed. So I was out doing mission work and, and connecting and, and here's what happened, y'all. Here's what was crazy, right? And this is a part of my testimony I don't think I've ever told here is that it was the following year that I finally decided. I, I graduated from school and, 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 and I went out to do mission work and, and I was preaching the word of God and then came all around the, the country and started preaching the word of God in detention centers and at schools and it was amazing to see his hand work. And then I went back the second summer to, to Zambia, Africa and I was preaching and it, man, that thing fell flat. Worst sermon I've ever preached in my life happened as I was opening up a three-week revival in the middle of the bush of Zambia, Africa. And I had two or three people who were, who were there with me. And as they were with me, they, 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 I said, man, y'all, I'm going to give up. One of y'all have to preach. And he was like, Pastor, I need you to understand something. That you're not here because of your strength. God didn't bring you here because you were special. Oh. Oh, wow. God used you and is using you and will use you because you're willing. Yeah. And it was at that moment, it was at that moment. Now, now brother didn't know me like that to be talking to me like that. Because, because he was coming from a pure place and a desire to see me grow, it did something in my heart. And it was, it was that night that I went to preach. It was still a bad sermon. But that night, I said, God, if you can use me like this, then I'll do whatever you want me to do. But I want you to understand that happened because of good Christian community. Let's see.